Hello everybody, this is Jeff Perlman, founder and CEO of Zojo, and welcome to part two of my XDC Anywhere 2022 keynote. Since some of you are new to Zojo, I want to start off talking about a little bit of our history. You know, we've been around for a long time. Okay, well, maybe not that long, but we shipped version 1.0 in 1998. I started this because I'm a developer. I wanted a tool I could use to rapidly build cross-platform applications. Now, back then, that just meant Mac OS and Windows. And really, it meant Mac OS developers needing to ship desktop applications for Windows. But a lot has changed since then. In addition to Mac OS and Windows, it means Linux, Web, iOS, Raspberry Pi, and Android. You know, a lot of the development tools from back then are not around anymore today. How is it that Zojo was able to do what they could not? The answer is constant evolution. In order to survive, like life itself, you have to be willing to constantly adapt and evolve to survive in an ever-changing environment. Change is something here at Zojo we've never been afraid of. For example, after many years of adding new features and new platforms, we realized that our APIs had not been as consistent as we have liked them to be. So we created API 2.0. API 2.0 brought about a level of consistency that meant you could write more code that would work unaltered on desktop, mobile, and web projects. This was a multi-year project for us, so it's something we took very seriously, and it's not a change we made lightly. We knew it was going to require some extra effort on the part of existing users, but ultimately, it makes the whole process of writing code easier and faster, and it gives Zojo far more staying power. Now, while changes of this magnitude aren't anything we do on any kind of regular basis, they're actually quite rare, they do mean that Zojo continues to be relevant for building modern applications for modern operating systems in this ever-changing world. Our public roadmap is where you can see what we're planning for the future. You can also see things we've delivered in the recent past. Generally speaking, the order of items on that list is the order we plan to deliver them in. But sometimes things have to change. Uh, we can't always anticipate what's going to happen in the world of technology. The most recent example of this is Apple's switch to their own Apple Silicon. There were rumors going around for a long time that they were considering using the chips from their iPhone and iPad in their desktop computers. But when they were going to make that change was unclear, and they keep things like this close to their vest. When they announced it, we quickly adapted and made it available for Zojo projects. So if the future of Zojo interests you, our public roadmap is something you'll definitely want to pay attention to. It's going to show you what we've got planned for the future. It's going to show you what we've delivered in the recent past. And it demonstrates the consistency of our vision. But Zojo is much more than just a bunch of code and a vision. Zojo is a team. Whether it's customer service, marketing, administration, tech support, or engineering, Zojo's made up of the most dedicated, smart, enthusiastic, and creative people I've ever worked with. We're spread out over five time zones and two continents. And while we see each other every day on video chat, we also like to get together in person. That's why we're so looking forward to the Zojo Developer Retreat this September in Nashville. For some of us, it'll be our first time together in three years. For others, it'll be our first time together ever. And getting together with Zojo users that come to our in-person events is one of the, our favorite things about what we do. Everyone in the company contributes to making Zojo what it is. Proposals are written for features, with plenty of time given for discussion. All proposed APIs are reviewed by a committee to make sure that it remains consistent going forward. And the engineering team has a five-minute meeting every day to facilitate communication. We call it the huddle. While in the past, engineers were siloed into a very narrow scope or narrow portion of the product, today we take a multidisciplinary approach, with engineers working across many different parts of Zojo. As I'm sure you know, Zojo is a very broad product now. In fact, over half of the engineering team has worked on the compiler. From an engineering point of view, we have more cross-knowledge on the engineering team than we've ever had before in our history. As a result, we are well prepared to take on any challenge that the ever-changing world of technology might throw at us. As a company, 
These past few years have had us facing what was an unforeseen challenge, the COVID pandemic. Like the rest of you, we've had to navigate these waters, and it hasn't been easy. But we're fortunate, because for over a decade, Team Zojo has been working from home. So while most of the world was adapting to that, we're experts at it. Over the past few years, we've all been giving our friends and neighbors advice on best practices on working from home. From a business point of view, we're fortunate to have been spared by this pandemic, and we are grateful because many have not been so lucky. And speaking of the world, the Zojo user community is quite international, with users in nearly every country and spread across every continent, including Antarctica, by the way, with users in every discipline and industry and across the entire world, speaking different languages and coming from different points of origin. You'd think that we have nothing in common. But we do. We all share a love for creating software that makes the lives of other people easier. New users continue to join the Zojo community every day. Over the past two years, thousands of students have become developers through our partnership with GitHub. In fact, Zojo is used to teach programming in schools all over the world and at all different levels. We also provide free and discounted licenses to teachers. You can learn more about that at zojo.com slash educators. Zojo license renewals continue to be quite strong, with Pro Plus licenses growing faster than we ever predicted. Zojo Cloud is also doing quite well, growing steadily every year since it was launched. The Zojo Forum has more users than ever before. In fact, it's grown so much, we had to upgrade the server that the forum runs on to handle all of the additional traffic. Speaking of the forum, what keeps it an inviting and friendly place are our moderators. The moderation team is made up of Zojo team members and volunteers from the community. And I'd like to thank Dana Brown, Anthony Cyphers, Alyssa Foley, Jason Parsley, Gavin Smith, and Kem Tekene for their dedication to keeping it that way. We also have a group of MVPs, or Most Valued Professionals, that communicate with us on a nearly daily basis about the wants and needs of the Zojo community. We really appreciate their efforts, and I'd like to thank Anthony Cyphers, Wayne Golding, Christian Schmidt, Gavin Smith, and Kem Tekene for all that they do. Now, as I said earlier, I'm a developer. That's why I do what I do, and I'm heavily involved in the design of Zojo. One part of Zojo that everyone relies upon is the documentation. We all rely upon it, but new users really rely upon it. So I needed to set it on a path to be the best it could be. Now, we've been using MediaWiki, which is the engine behind Wikipedia, for our documentation. Now, with a lot more options available, I decided we needed a modern look. We wanted all of our content to be available right in the IDE rather than just the language reference. We needed easier navigation for new users, live searching, and we needed version control. While this last point is an internal issue, it's important to us because the documentation needs to stay in sync with the product, and MediaWiki is really not designed to work with version control. Fortunately, I found a documentation engine designed for documenting programming languages. Now, while documentation is always a work in progress, the new system provided us with what we wanted, a modern look and feel where information is far more discoverable and easier to use. Having said that, getting there wasn't easy. The original documentation had over 9,000 pages. They had to be reorganized. They had to be reformatted. Pages had to be recoded because MediaWiki and the new system are very different. And every single link on every single page had to be updated. Not a simple task. Converting the documentation by hand was obviously out of the question. So I did what any of you would do. I wrote an app. The app used the MediaWiki API, a SQLite database. It converted all the pages to markdown and restructured text. Those are the formats of the new system. And used the Sphinx documentation engine. I created the app so that on the left would be all of the MediaWiki pages. And on the right, I could create a hierarchy that would become the sidebar that's in the documentation today. I could simply create new categories, drag and drop pages, and then when I was ready, press convert to convert all of them to the new system at once. The end result was 2,300 pages of documentation, all converted in a completely automated way. It was an enormous effort, but I'm really happy with the end result. 
One of my strengths as the CEO of Zojo is that just like you, I'm a developer. And as is the whole team. Because as you know, we build Zojo with Zojo. And as both CEO and a Zojo user and developer, of course, like all of you, I care about Zojo's future. We have some features whose development is nearing completion, and a few of them are not on the roadmap today. Soon we'll have support for Windows on ARM. But we've also added PDF encryption, and the mobile HTML viewer is getting a huge upgrade. You'll soon have a version that is nearly feature identical to the desktop version, allowing you to do all kinds of things that could never have been done before in your mobile apps. A little further down the road, we'll be adding support for Linux on ARM. And of course, if you watched Paul's presentation, you know that we're reaching the light at the end of the tunnel in terms of our support for Android. We're really excited about it. And if you have a pro license, you can go download the pre-releases and try it yourself. I hope you're as excited as we are about the future of Zojo, and I hope that you'll come talk to us about it in Nashville. Like I said before, we love getting together in person. We love to talk to you. It's going to be September 19th and 20th. The 19th is going to be our kind of standard developer day where we have sessions, but the 20th is going to be what we call our developer adventure. We're going to go out as a group around Nashville, and we're going to have a great time. I hope you can make it, and thank you again for being a Zojo user. It's your support that makes all this possible.